What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to yet another episode of our weekly podcast. We are batting practice, of course. We got a great episode for you tonight. Before we get too far into it, though, as always, how are we feeling on this fine Sunday evening? Yo, hold on, my mic's kind of far away, but there we go. I came oh. through. I have the good and plenty. Yes. Yes. Uh, it's been sitting yes. on the counter for like three or four days now, and Aging. I kept my mouth shut, well. but I did remember to buy them. Oh, and man. so I I was being told by outside sources that I'm the one who's cheating because these have a candy coating on the outside. And they're not going to taste as much like black licorice as what Nash got. But I don't know, because Nash says he hates black licorice. He fades it, and he ended up eating the rest of it? No, whoa, whoa, whoa. I had I had a couple pieces outside of what was recorded. Um, it, tastes, it tastes like a slightly worse Twizzler. <laughs> so, like, if you want something sweet, but you don't want to, like, really indulge, a Twizzler is always a good choice because they're small and light. So a couple extra, but nothing too crazy. I didn't I didn't down the whole bag. All right. You came here for the hot takes. So I don't okay. know if I can be considered neutral since I love black licorice. Right. We'll say that the Twizzler black licorice is less sharp of a flavor than good and plenty. Ooh. Like good and plenty, you can like just get the coating. You could like eat around it like a kid that doesn't like, I don't know. Like if you eat an Oreo and you just go for the filling, like you could do the reverse <laughs> that with good and plenty. You just eat the outside eat and the eat crust. the inside. Um, but so I think Jacob, I think you actually got the sh- the short oh, end. Oh, okay. I think good and plenty. If you the good and plenty are more indicative flavor of real black licorice. Um, yeah, I was gonna tw- I was gonna slander Twizzlers, but I thought you know it's it's not worth it, and I actually don't know. I'm I'm indifferent to Twizzlers at this point. Good news. The first ingredient is sugar. And the second ingredient is corn syrup. It can't be that bad if the first ingredient is sugar. I would say I'll I'll munch on it like Nash did throughout, but I'm gonna start off with five. Like I'm going sorry, six. I've sit oh I dropped one. (laughs) That's a respectable that's a respectable amount. Yeah. Ready? Well, and you swallow them like pills, you know. No, that, I'm right? gonna that's... chew. Them. Well, that no, would make no, no. it that's, too easy. That's the official way to do it, actually. <laughs> then you don't get into the flavor. <laughs> that'd I'm be, joking. That'd, All right, that'd be a good way to, to cheat through it. <laughs> Mm-mm. It's great. Yeah, it's, it's great. bad. It's just bad. It's just it's not growing on me. They're chewy, right? It's like the same consistency as like uh like a Mike and Ike? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Exactly. Mike and Ike's are good. good comp. I would say there's like a hundred other candies of that consistency that I would choose first. So I do get that candy coating. Like, and I have that taste in my mouth, but the residual taste is the black licorice taste. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's just like I don't know why. It's not my go to taste. Okay, wait. We've discussed this on the podcast about the cilantro gene. Do you think is there a licorice gene? I was just no, gonna no. ask the same exact thing. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna ask the same thing. Something about your your the makeup of your taste buds. I don't know. Are we okay? We're we're are we a science podcast now, boys? We're gonna talk about <laughs> allergens and all this other fun stuff. No, no, no. Hey, before you go mm-hmm. judging someone who is considered picky by society, maybe their taste buds are just different and they foods taste weird to them. Are you speaking nah. from experience? No, I am very much not a picky person. Okay. But, okay. but okay, I say that and then you listen to the podcast and the, you, the food topic comes up and it's like, oh, doesn't like black workers, doesn't like pineapple on pizza. So yep. it it makes me out to look more selective, but I pick okay. controversial foods. So, all right, oysters. 
A hundred percent. Yes. Love oysters. Okay. Yeah. Oysters. Yeah. Um, sashimi. Yes. I can't say the last time I've had or ever had sashimi. What about sashimi? Would you eat it? Would you eat it? Like, like just the sure. raw piece of fish. Sure. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to think of like what other foods are, are polarizing or are more Snails? adventurous. Love. Escargot. So good. Okay. Wow. Octopus. Delicious. Alligator. Also delicious. <laughs> what about vegetables? Are there any vegetables you don't eat? Um, I don't love Brussels sprouts. Oh, that's a bad take. Yeah. Outside of that. When's the last time you've had Brussels sprouts? I would say within the last a year. Okay. 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 I, I will say most of the time I've had Brussels sprouts and I do like them is at a restaurant and they're served like with like bacon pieces on top or Sugar. something of that nature. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they're or good salt. that way, but I don't think I'd ever like it's the smell. I can't get over the smell of just like cooked Brussels sprouts. Mm. I feel you. Um, except I can't agree with you. <laughs> That's fair. But black licorice, I'm giving a thumbs down. I'm fading good and plenty. I'd wait, be wait. curious. I'd be curious what you thought of the black licorice twist. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Maybe I'll have to time. buy them. Next, yeah. next I did them. look. They only had <laughs> red like strings. They did oh. not have any sort of black licorice strings where mm. I was looking. So Dang. good and plenty it was. Yeah. Not a fan. Not a fan. But that's okay. Because that's not what we're talking about today. Although let us know. Let us know in the comment section if you guys like black licorice. Because it seems to be very polarizing on this podcast. We only have three people here. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I want. I, I want. We should do two polls. Okay. One is do you like Brussels sprouts? And the other okay. one is, do you like black licorice? All right. Which one do you think gets more upvotes, black licorice or Brussels Ooh. sprouts? Ooh. Brussels sprouts. Ah, I don't know. That's actually a really good question. That's, because... that's like so biased of an answer. Yeah. I think black licorice. I don't know. Let's Twitter poll it. We, yeah, we we're can gonna, start we're doing Twitter some Twitter poll. polls again. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely for the MLB season. Also, um, giveaway? giveaway oh oh for the mlb season uh keep an eye out for that because we made a goal a few weeks ago to hit 100 views on a podcast and not only did you guys shatter that but we hit 100 views just on youtube not even oh. including our spotify account Heck so yeah. shout out that's two weeks ago last episode it makes sense last week's episode was over an hour long and you guys still crushed it so shout out to that but remember to leave a rating and comments and like and subscribe and you know all that right now as you are listening but shout out again to you guys here Woo. yeah maybe stay tuned for another giveaway another 2024 card giveaway that you could use in a champion lineup whoa champion lineups. Champ champion yeah. whoa uh, speaking of champion lineups, that's kind of what we're talking about today. We're talking about making some champ lineups. We're talking about, all right, last week or two weeks ago, we did our common draft. Uh, last week, we talked about players that we like, but we didn't less, like specifically talk about so rare players that we're buying. This week, we're spending some money. All right. We got a little bit of money in our so rare accounts, and we're making champ lineups. So who are we buying today? We're just going to go through the market and discuss a little bit of players, a little bit of something, see what's up, what we're looking at. Andrew's talking about buying a rare team, maybe? Whale, whale over here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not really. But uh, <laughs> we'll have to go through some strategies and see if that's worth it now or maybe wait a few weeks to do so. Of course, that card requirement will go up in a few weeks, so who knows. But, yeah, let's, let's jump right into it. So, first and foremost, uh, I'm going to shout myself out here. And you'll see this week. It'll probably be after the podcast is released. I'm going to release my own little video, but I completed a collection on Ooh. So Rare. A 2024 Brewers Limited collection. So definitely going to be using some of these cards in my champion lineups, but also not the most expensive collection of all time because the Brewers, uh, to go off of terms of the MLB, the show game that just came out the other day, 
there are bronze, there's common, there's bronze, there's silver, there's gold, and there's diamond players, right? The Brewers, all of their hitters are silver or under. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Really? Sorry, You're no, gonna... I lied. William William Contreras is a gold. William Contreras is a gold. Um, wow. Yeah, but everyone else is a silver or worse. So Yelich, the Yelich slander. Yelly is, is a is silver. Tough. Yep, yep, yep. Um, Hoskins didn't play, so I, I guess that's fair. Hoskins, I think, was like year. a seventy-seven. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of just even. Same with Garrett Mitchell's only at a seventy-two, but he didn't play last year. So they, there's room for improvement, and MLB the Show does that. They upgrade their cards as they go. It's not like FIFA where they have to release new cards and stuff. But, anyways, that's my collection. So I that's oh. my first strategy for bidding. This year was bidding on Brewers, but now that I have a team, I'm like, I might want a few more cards so I can field a better champion lineup. So I'm I'm bidding on a few more cards, probably, probably before the game week ends. But have you guys bid on any cards yet other than Brewers? Are you trying to set your own champ lineups before the season starts, Andrew? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. He says, oh, yeah. Not even you know, a question. I, I, I talked – well, it actually was. I, I was on the fence about – because I uh, going into the season, I had over 115 limited cards. So I was pretty much set. Uh, but with the new season requirements for champion, I did not have five new season cards. And I was kind of looking to see, like, whether it made sense for my gallery – to go and, and enter those competitions. And I kind of did some math and figured out, you know, if, if I put together a team, honestly, I went for as little budget as possible. We'll see if that actually uh, works out. So my previous season, season cards, I have a lot of the big hitters in, in the, um in my gallery, which I'm very uh, happy with, but for new season cards, I was actually trying to stray away from the big the big uh, players. And so just doing some quick math, I was able to get my team for about 50 US dollars uh, for and five players. Five, yeah. Granted, I'm going to need to get a sixth or my, my hope is that my uh, classic season cards from last year and the year before we'll win, one. Yeah. Win, win me uh, my sixth player so that when the requirement jumps up, I have some depth. Um, so yeah, so I'm sitting good. The thing I'm thinking about is whether to actually move, move into rare and whether that would make sense for my gallery. Um, but yeah, Josh, I know you've also bid on some cards. So why don't you share what you've been buying with us? Yeah, so I took kind of your approach, but uh mm -hmm. a big factor that was different about it is i kind of went for uh the basketball style approach to my lineup um i don't necessarily recommend this but i'm trying it out as kind of an experiment i did a little bit where i went for like an mvp type player and mm -hmm. then um i bought some not i don't want to say like cheaper like lower tier but more middle tier guys um so i did some quick math for my five guys, I spent right at around a hundred US dollars. Oh, big boy whoa, over here. sperm oh, whale. But, whoa. But, but 45 of that was on one player. Gotcha. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah, this will be great. That's okay. a season long so, investment. Yeah. Correct. So it's it'll be interesting to see how this strategy works out. Um, I'm also really high on the guy I bought for MVP this year, um, as are a lot of other people. <laughs> So uh, hopefully it works out. Uh, I'll be curious to see. But um, kind of going off what Andrew talked about last week, I kind of went after more power hitters. I wanted guys that are, are more likely to hit home runs. Um, this is a little bit of a all or nothing type strategy because home runs score a lot. Uh, and and those kind of game weeks are, are going to get you high up and get high scores and get good rewards. Uh, but these are the guys that are also striking out more, not getting as many hits, not hitting for average, that kind of thing. Also probably lacking in the stolen base category. Um, so you lose out on points there, but um, 
by the way, my MVP that I um I'm by or and using is Mike Trout. Oh uh, wow! Hey oh, so I never wow. thought I would. I'm gonna be honest. I never thought I would own a Mike Trout card in silver, but for forty five bucks, I was pretty happy with that. Um, and yeah, we'll see. But outside of Trout, a right around that fifty dollar mark as well for for some middle tier guys. So. The deals are out there. The players are out there. Um, if you're willing to spend a little bit, you could easily have a lineup for champ right away week one. Yeah. So why why Trout? Trout because um, I am high on him this year. Uh, I think he's going to have a bounce back year. I'm a little concerned about his injury history, but I think there's a risk of injury with any player you buy, so – that's kind of a give and take uh, topic there. Um, I think he's going to have less pressure now that Otani isn't there. I think the Angels are going to be not terrible, but also not great. Um, so that also <laughs> takes a little bit of pressure off of him. Um, but yeah, uh, he's still only 32. You know, it's not like he's 35 now. 32 is getting up there for a hitter, but he's not super old yet. He still has some gas left in the tank. Um, when he's healthy, he hits home runs. He steals, he hits for average as well. He's an MVP. He's an MVP mm -hmm. many multiple times. Mm -hmm. So, um, we'll see what happens. Hopefully he can stay healthy, but yeah. Okay. Bang. I will also shout oh. out a website that I use the outside of Sora data. Ooh. Um, if you've mm. never looked at fan graphs, it's a great yeah. website. They have, mm. uh, an excellent graph for projections and predictions. Ooh. Um, so I actually filtered home runs and looked at who they're projecting for, uh, uh, home run hitters this year and who's going to hit the most and use that to kind of guide my bids. Okay. Who do they think That's is hitting the most fun. home runs this year? I believe Acuna is at the top, but let wow. me. Wow. All right, what do you think? MP. Acuna or anyone else? We'll give Acuna, let's say we'll give Acuna plus... Not Acuna, 600. Sorry. Oh, okay. I was Aaron Judge. Say. Judge? Projected okay, let's give, let's give Judge plus 500 to win a home run king this year. Are you putting 100 bucks on Judge to win five? Or no? Are you putting it on someone else? Plus five, it'd be a uh, you win five hundo, not five. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, what I'm saying. Okay, okay. I'm taking any no. other player. You're any taking, other. you're splitting that bet up, or maybe saving your hundred bucks. Yeah. Okay. I think I Andrew, the you picked there. you picked Judge to be a bust this year. I did. Nosh, I, I did, did pick Trout year. to be the bounce back. So there, there we go. go. Trout on this list is tenth, projected thirty five homers this wow. year. Wow. That's decent. Again, Where does, uh, projections, people are going to hit 35 home runs, huh? Take projections with a grain of salt. Um, but fan graphs, they have good stuff on here. Um, yeah, 10, they, uh, yeah, 10 people to hit 35 or more home runs. Oh, Which I'd love to see crazy. how many people hit that number last year. Well, wow. right. Can they, can they tell me? Can we, I believe can we, do... we can. I believe we can look at that. I'm gonna <laughs> guess there were more than ten last year to hit that number. Yeah, let's see. Otani, Olson, Acuna. Thirteen players hit 35 or more home runs. Wow. Last okay. Year. Okay. Okay. I was gonna try and name. Berger had 34. Jake Berger. He has one off. One off. I should buy his silver. Card. That's one of my guys. That's one of my guys. Twenty six. If he's hitting thirty four home runs, that's a solid silver card. Yes. Yep. Twenty six people let's hit thirty Berger. or more home runs last year. Jake Berger, selling for. Wow, he's selling for ten bucks. Yep. There you go. Yeah. So he was he's... one of my five. Oh, how about that? Okay. Yep. Yeah, because I had the I had the exact same strategy as Josh. Like mm -hmm. I I wanted to get the cheapest 
power hitters I possibly could for my lineup. And rather than I like, it'll be interesting to see how your approach works with going in on one MVP. Like I would say all of my players are probably at the same level um, and, you know, have the potential, but I would say none is, I mean, maybe they could be, they're like on the verge of all-star territory, but if they were all-stars, they would be overperforming probably what we expect them to go to be doing going into the season. Right. So, okay, we can, <laughs> let's, let's get specific here. Cause why not? The first player I bought um, and I bought this player more so cause he's a brewer than I, I also think he's going to have a great bounce back year. Uh, but I bought a Reese Hoskins. Um, he doesn't, he doesn't fall within the top 30 for projected home runs oh. this year. Um, I'm guessing again, fan graphs. I want to say uses data from last year to help with this year's projections because Hoskins is out the whole year. It's harder to make a projection. Um, in 2022, he was great. Um, he, I want to say he hit over 30 home runs that year. Um, but then moving on from that, Mike Trout is currently projected um, 10th on the list at 35 home runs. I bought a Spencer Torkelson, who um, is projected 14th on the list with 33 home runs. And then I also bought a Willie Adamez, which is uh, on the list at 25th for 29 home runs. The thing with Willie is, is he is a middle infielder. You don't get as much power with those middle infielders, but he's sitting right at second for shortstops wow. in terms of projected oh. home runs. Just outside of Tatis, who's selling for over a hundred dollars. I got Willie for nine bucks. Me so too. that's kind of how I looked at it. Um, you can filter by position, you can filter by um home runs, RBIs, average, whatever you want to filter by. Um, so that's kind of how I looked at it. I, I went for more power hitters, um, and then took position into account too when looking at some of those players. But a couple guys in the top 25 for home runs is gonna help your solar lineups greatly. So hmm. Jacob, give us the tea. What'd you do? What did I do? Well, I have currently been looking at a relief pitcher. Because that's really what my team needs, especially since Devin Williams is going to be hurt mm -hmm. this year. I think yep. I'm going to need that. And then I might need another starting pitcher so I can have an offset to Freddie Peralta when he is pitching. And I don't have a pitcher for the other game week. But for my relief pitcher, if you didn't notice this past week, we had a couple of injuries come out, including someone that I drafted for my common team. Oh. I drafted Johan Duran for your Minnesota Twins, and it came out. Yes. Yeah. And it's not good. And it's not good. Um, he. Hold on. I was. Gosh, do you know what his close. injury is? I thought it was uh, something with his elbow. Oh, is it really? Oh, that's not um, good. Um. Oblique strain. Okay. Uh, so it's not elbow. Right. It's not throwing arm. That's okay. But oblique strains can nag throughout the season. <laughs> yeah. Uh, You need He's your core to pitch. Yeah. You need your core to pitch. He's starting off the season in the IL. It's going to be at least a month. I've heard up to three. So yep. I, of course, I'm taking that knowledge in stride. I redrafted my common team because I had Duran in my common team. And I am bidding on a Griffin Jacks because he's the backup. He is the setup man for the Minnesota Twins. And it looks like he's going to be that guy for now for the Twins. And I'm going to be kind of high on the Twins this year. The AL Central is a little weak, to say the Very. least. Nosh, you said the Royals actually have a pretty good shot this year, which is funny because they were not good last year. But I don't necessarily disagree with that, too. But the Twins should. Twins or Guardians, again, should be at the top of this division. The Twins up there for sure. And I think Jax is going to have a good time closing for them. And then even 
when Duran returns, he'll still be that guy pitching on the reg because he's that guy that they need in situations. So that's who I'm bidding on. As for a starter, I feel like starters, you can go a little more buck wild, <laughs> I guess. I haven't looked entirely at starters, but I like, I mean, it's fantasy sports. Part of watching fantasy sports is watching your players play in real life. So I kind of want to get a guy that I can watch a lot. And the Brewers don't have that many starting pitchers <laughs> available <laughs> with cards. If you guys have noticed, they have, yeah, they only have 15 minutes. Freddy Peralta here. and then Colin Ray. <laughs> <laughs> we need my bro- we need uh uh my boy dl i know so i don't think colin Re- i mean it'll be an offset for freddie peralta considering where they are in the lineup but it or in the rotation but i don't i need something better for my champion lineup and let's be honest i do so so i guess let's 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 go let's share the screen and let's go on the market yeah. And let's look at a starting pitcher, because why not? That's what we're here for. So, how, do you have your five? Uh, this so excluding the pitcher, do you have the five minimum cards? Yeah, I have. Okay, they're all Brewers. Okay, so <laughs> as it stands, so you could fill out. Yeah, you could fill out a whole r- roster with that. So, what makes you want to get an in-season card over going for a classic one? What do you mean? Like you could get a better player's old card than you like for the same price as you could get a worse player's new card. And if you can like if you don't have to have all new cards, like I'm planning to only like Oh, because I, I have only... enough players to fill that position already. I'll I'll mm. throw Corey Seeger or Jose Altuve in there. I have MVPs nice. of former MVPs or sorry, former years cards of MVPs like Seager and Altuve. So I'm not worried about that. Yeah. What I am hoping is that I can start off these first few weeks where you only need five cards in the new season for champion. I'm hoping I can squeeze a Brewers lineup in for those first few weeks, maybe win some cash, and then have my other lineups from last year, years prior, win me some new season cards. And then I can build that new team around like kind of Sorry, Brewers, but unless you guys are doing real hot, replace them as I go with cards that I win, and we'll see how that ends up working out. But I do need some other cards. Like, I can't just run that champion lineup all year, let's be honest. I do need another starting pitcher other than Colin Ray. <laughs> so let's look at the market. Yeah. I think that's um, a, it. I think new season pitchers are actually going to be a very important card in your lineup. Like, if you are running kind of loaded right now too so perfect yeah if you are building a a winning lineup i think you want your previous season card probably to be a hitter i think if you're using that on a starting pitcher i think you're leaving opportunity on the table leaving that upside um so i think i like i love the idea of making sure i'm uh, you you might have even convinced me to actually go and just get a starting pitcher so that that way come week one I can roll out uh, two MVP type players alongside my five average Joes. Um, so I, I I like this. Yeah. Oh yeah. So like here. Well, in fact, before we do this, let's because I haven't flex, flex. Let's do this. Let's fill out the champ lineup. There's 280 people currently. Oh, haven't forgot about him. Let's flex him real quick. Let's show him off. He's still here. Someone made an offer for Luis Castillo. Yes. Someone went into my gallery and made an offer for this card. And I was like, absolutely not. I think he offered (laughs) me like 25 bucks, like something pretty good too. Wow. Yeah. Dang. So, but no, this is my guy. I'm keeping him uh, forever. Unless someone wants to buy him for like 5,000. For sure. (laughs) Hit me up. But anyways... Let's go back to the starting pitcher squad here. So I have Freddie. So that's who I'll throw throw in. But like, like let's it. be honest here. Who else am, am I gonna throw Colin Ray as a backup? Maybe. 
DMP, good. DMP, 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 DMP. He, he had, had 26 points starts. against the he Cubs. Had some, <laughs> he had some decent starts Maybe I will. Last year. I don't know. I still feel like I need another ace. Like a Freddy type ace. He's 34, huh? He That's crazy. So so let's pretend that Freddy is in. Relief pitcher. I have Devin Williams, but obviously I can't, so we'll throw in Pine Amps. This is where relief pitcher, I'd also throw in Griffin Jacks, too, if I do end up winning that card. Corner infielder, here's where we get a little scary. I have Reese Hoskins, who's a zero average. <laughs> I could throw in Pete. I could throw in Jose Ramirez. I could, I don't know how I feel about Max Muncy. He's a big strikeout guy. I also have a stack at corner infield, but... Here's a position where I feel like I could get away with Reese Hoskins. And I already have three of the new cards now. Middle infielder, there's no way I'm going to be playing Gary Sanchez. But we have another great option for the Brewers in William Contreras. Projected to be the best hitting catcher of 2024? Absolutely. And he DHs too when he's not catching, which is huge. Because some catchers don't. They get the day off. And he'll have days off, but so will everyone. So, all right, outfield, Yelly. Yelly's a good enough player to put into a lineup, I want to say, at this point. He he ended Decent. the year pretty well. Look at that, 17 points in their last game against Diamondbacks. But Josh and I went he's to. He's put up solid scores. Yes. Look at this one. 50. We were there. Um, of course, we he does pose an injury risk. Um, maybe not so much as Trout does, but he has been injured in the past, uh, as you can see with all these DMPs here in a row. But I think for now, he's good enough to throw in. And there's my five for the first week. And now I could throw in, boom, Corey Seager. And like I said, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Boom, Jose Altuve. Four games, too. They both have four games. So Huge. I think this is a pretty good champ lineup to start off with. Um, And then, like I said, it'd be cool to try and see a... How do I get out of here? There we go. Like a where this is so different than last year. All-star? Is this where you can use any of the cards? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So then I could throw like I have Framber, my prediction for the Cy Young. Relief pitcher. I have good relief pitchers. I have Josh Hader. <laughs> Bang. I don't know. How do we feel about Hader this year? I saw him give a home run to your boy, Jake Berger. Back to back, Jake Low Berger. Save. And, exactly. Uh, yeah. Jazz Chisholm, I think, maybe. Yep. Jazzy. Yeah. Took him so, deep. but there, there we go. I mean, that's my strategy. Oh, look, redraft now. It's telling me. Here, you want to see my redraft too while we're at it. So, O'Neill Cruz, I had, I couldn't fade him with the five points. I had to redraft him. That allowed me to pick Acuna. That allowed me to have more points to pick Acuna. Dang. Wow, yeah, and sick. then I, I also have Edwin Diaz in there as well to replace my Duran, so hopefully he can come back strong. But there we go. I have Acuna, j and Corey Seager all on the same team. I oh, like I like this common. I know. Can't forget about Anel Cruz, Rizzo. I mean, the whole team is looking solid. So, But anyways, back to the market. Let's look at, let's look at some starting pitchers. Let's look at some aces, too. Like, now that I have my Freddy Peralta, I don't need, like, a, a backup, like a Bailey Falter as a backup. I'm looking for Josiah Gray. Could be interesting. Framber. Big... I could get a new card of Framber. Could always yeah, how much is he been selling for? That's a good question. Can you see this? Well, if you click if you click on his player card, you can just That's go true. to his... Uh... It's a nice down. feature. So we're recently, recently purchased. Yeah. Yeah. 18, seven. Oh, wow. wow Someone got a that. steal. Those overnight auctions. Wow. Well, that's the three three days ago. Would that be? No, uh, it's still maybe. Nope, that's not St. Patrick's Or do you Day. think card prices are taking a little hike again because of? Well, they, they did announce the a new referral program. If mm -hmm. you convince a friend to sign up, uh, I believe the incentives are pretty decent right now. Mm -hmm. Nosh? Little Justin Steele action. He Joe got, Musgrove could hurt, be interesting. Though. 
Look at that. I wonder how much Musgrove has been selling for. I think that might be a good call here. Look at his price has kind of dropped off. He used to be selling for 12 Look nine and now he sold look for seven news and analysis tab whoa right there. yeah look at the, uh, this is i didn't even know this was a thing this is the road wire, wire baby. this man. is better than espn yeah there you go roughed up and short start must have allowed five runs on seven hits i watched this over 2.2 innings against the dodgers in seoul yeah, that game some, was nuts that game was like 16 to 11 in south korea but that's right. Padres handed him five run lead and it didn't even matter. So I don't know. That could be interesting. I'm not going to place a bid on any cards specifically right now because. So what what stands out to me is the price difference between Frambler and the, even Joe Jacks. Musgrove. Like they're selling like the gap, the dollar gap between the best pitcher and the an OK pitcher is only ten dollars. I mean, granted, it's double. But if you compare like. Uh, you know, Corey Seager versus Willie Adamas. I guarantee, I don't know what the gap is, but I would bet it's more than 10 bucks. So maybe, maybe elite pitchers are actually under, well, I'm not going to say they're underpriced right now, but if you are trying to build uh, a new, new uh, team, I think that that could be a great position to make sure that you get an elite one at, because you might not actually break the bank relatively. Yeah. So yeah, I think uh, there you have it. Anything else you guys want to say about bidding on cards? Because that's pretty much how we've been going about it for the past week. Um, I think. Yo, go ahead. Maybe, maybe talk about. So how how do you bid on cards? Like, do you use the auto bid? Do you use um, mm. like are you are you monitoring the auctions? Like, how do you make sure that you actually win the card that you're looking for? So I was using that feature that we just showed off on so rare not so rare data to see how uh the cards were being priced when i was bidding on them and then i would find the next card in line and see if it was bid up to about what it was at at least their last sale price and if it was i'd be like you know what i'm just gonna leave it find the next one and bid maybe 50 cents a dollar above what they were selling for and that worked out every single time besides once for 14 out of the 15 brewers cards it worked <laughs> the only one that i did not win the first time was joel pineapps overnight so if you yeah nosh if you bid on my joel pineapps overnight you did that so someone did get me overnight but that strategy was, worked was me <laughs> Maybe, yeah, did you get me back on revenge on purpose? You were just looking <laughs> at cards that I was bidding on. Nah, no, no, I, I... Not that petty. Wasn't... I was always trying to find the next card in line, and if their price was right, which most of the time it was, especially since Brewers aren't the most popular players to bid on right now, it's just what I did. And most of the time, I ended up paying pretty much spot on what they sell for, or a little bit over. But I was also going... I mean, for the content, for the collection, too. So I'm okay with that. And now I have a champ lineup as we just showed off too. So that's kind of how I went about it. I was using, I sold, I think I said this last week, I sold my soccer rare team oh. since the thresholds are all crazy now. And that's all going to switch up later this summer too. So that's why I'm kind of loaded in the solar department. I didn't put any new money in and I also didn't take any money out. I was just transferring between sports. So I like it. And it allowed me to build the collection. So that's how I went about it. Yeah, I I would actually look for specifically look for when auctions were ending, um, particularly ones that were ending at really weird times in the day in terms of at least times in the U.S. Obviously, it gets weird with people that are bidding on cards in Europe. I'm not sure what percent of silver MLB players are in Europe because it is in the U.S., but I would look for auctions ending at you know, kind of overnight. And then I would use the max bid feature. Um, look at recent sales. Normally put a max bid a couple of dollars below recent sales and kind of hope for a little bit of a deal in that sense. Um, and I'd say I probably one out of every seven to 10 cards I would bid on overnight, I would win at a 
discounted rate. Um, so if you're looking, if you're really desperate or have someone specific in mind that you want, it's probably not the best strategy to go about it. But if you're looking for more bulk players at, at, at a little bit of a discounted rate, that's a, a way you can go about it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I looked at it, at least for some players. Yeah, I mean, overnight makes sense. We saw it with those prices uh, that we yeah. just looked at. Those framblers. With those framber, yeah. Half, that's half crazy. Off. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, so, that's a big difference. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. And I'm I can see now. I can see a little run up going into this week too. So yeah. if you do if you don't have cards yet, I don't know. I mean, we're not I'm not trying to predict where the market is going, but generally with so rare, anytime you get close to realizing that utility of your cards, they do go up in price. So um just be mindful of that if you're looking at auctions. You know, I think we talked about on the podcast we thought St. Patrick's Day would be the market low. Maybe we're we're pretty, I think, spot on with that. Um but yeah, going into the season, who knows? Yeah, we will see. Excited though, baseball starts this week. Next yes, time sir. we record, baseball, baseball, baseball will have started. So let's go. We're pumped. That's pretty sweet. That's we're a pumped. great feeling. But I think it is. before we end today, we gotta do everyone's favorite segment. You know it. You got it. Nosh. What time Maybe. is it? It's time for figure eights. It's time to look at your text messages? Hey, you, no. you doxing people? Whoa! I'm doxing. It's All right. time for Rider Fate, baby. Let's go. We're back. We're back. It's time. It's time for a bet. It's time for a bet. All right. Starting up, of course, we always got to go topical here. We are starting with March Madness. March Madness just started on last Thursday. It's been going on all weekend. Um, I don't know about you guys. I've been watching plenty of basketball games. Um, this tournament's been pretty good so far. Uh, I love March Madness. Um, I think it's a great time of year, especially for college basketball. I'm 100% riding March Madness. <laughs> I agree, but I'm fading my alma mater. Oh. I'm fading me and Ugly. Andrew's alma mater. Ugly game. Because they got upset by a team that's losing by 25 right now. In the oh, to Duke, to Duke no. nonetheless. Yeah, to oh, Dukes are lo- the Dukes are losing to Duke. Oh. Badgers probably would have lost to Duke too, so that probably would have hurt that's, a little bit more, honestly. That's true, for sure. So, But I'm fading the Badgers. I don't know why they were even in the tournament to begin with. They didn't have a lead once against the 12 seed. Not once in the entire game. So yeah, it's crazy. It's so but, bad. And my bracket sucks too, but it's fun to watch the teams get upset. So I'm riding much madness. Just yeah. don't let Duke win. Fair. And I honestly, don't let it. don't let Purdue win. Nash, I don't know if you could handle that. No. I agree. Wait, what? Considering you your f- Purdue? familiar status. Cause Haley's family is all Purdue people. Her They're dad all went Purdue to, people? Her dad mm-hmm. went to Purdue. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. I, I understand stand, now. I understand I can't now. Stand, I can't stand Purdue because of, of ED. But yeah. <laughs> I hope they lose. Try ED. four the, hymns. Oh, this is not a paid endorsement. <laughs> Anyways. I'd say overall consensus is ride, but yeah. Oh yeah, ride, ride it yeah. all day. All right, this is, this is Georgetown versus Xavier. I'm pretty know, sure I, this, this picture is... is from when we went to Florida, like 12 years ago. I was to say this has got to be like 2000. Does it have these? It's got to be mm. on there somewhere. That scoreboard looks not like super old, but it's definitely outdated. I'm gonna guess 20 2008. Yeah. That's a fair guess. That's a pretty fair guess. All right. Who's um next? I I don't know if we've I feel like this oh, was here already a topic. This might have already been a topic of discussion on the rider fade, but again, nope. very topical. Mm-mm. Um as you all know, Shohei Otani's translator uh is in some hot water. 
uh it's a crazy story if you haven't read it i would highly recommend reading about it um otani you know i don't know where this is gonna go otani could also be in some in some hot water um but at the same time it's legal i'm pretty it's legal in california right nope. no it is not it's illegal okay. it's legal illegal. in north carolina okay so i feel like the the sentiment around sports betting has has eased up in recent years uh it is still illegal in certain states such as california where shohei otani was playing when these bets were being made um so that's a crazy story uh his translator got fired um but yeah i it's kind of funny are you riding or fading betting it's like are you betting on betting um here's the thing i'm 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 gonna okay, ride you, sports you go. betting i'm gonna ride it too but not for myself i'm a fantasy okay. sports better but i just i can't get into prop bets mm. i like looking at them i really do like looking at them and i think it's fun like i've done with a group of friends and we'll probably do this year with the group of friends on a bachelor party but i've done it before and that was fun but I'm not looking at every single NCAA tournament. Will Zach Eady get plus or minus 11 rebounds? Will Zach Eady score over 22 points this game? I'm not betting every single last dollar I have on like little prop bets like that. That being said, if you have the money and you know how to spend it responsibly, go for it. I like looking at all that stuff. It's still fun to like in my head make those bets without actually physically placing them. So I'm gonna write it. That being said, though, it's just not it's not my territory to put my money in. I would rather put money into so rare. I'd rather put money into like the stock market <laughs> <laughs> than sports betting. But or like if I'm gonna do something like that, I'd put money into an ESPN year long baseball league or hockey league, given like what dad does. So but I, I'm riding it. I have nothing against it. Spend your own money. True. It's fun. It's very fun. The line, the line <laughs> between so rare and sports gambling, I think, is closer. I think sp- I think so rare is more like sports betting than it is fantasy sports. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I might be a bold little bold take, but um, there's a reason why I think why people that play so rare also probably were gamblers at some point in their past. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, but the nice thing about Sower is it's kind of, for me at least, I don't really bet since I already feel like, you know, my my bet this year is I bought $50 worth of limited cards and I hope yeah. that I can win more than 50 bucks back. And uh, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Same same difference between me putting 50 bucks on the Brewers to, uh, to, to, to you know, hit some win total if we want to take it to a prop bet or if we want to bet on them to win the World Series. I feel a lot more confident in my ability to pick so rare players than my ability to pick yeah. uh, prop bets or even who's going to win uh, specific games. But yeah, but I like it overall. Yeah, I'm with you, Jacob. It is kind of like a special occasion or like mm-hmm. very circumstantial. Like if the Super Bowl's on, sure. Like why not bet how long the national anthem's going to be? But like, like you said, you're not going to uh, – a Brewers game on a Tuesday and hoping Colin Ray hits a, over four and a half strikeouts, you know? Okay. But I, I do have to say from experience going to a real life sporting event and putting a makes it more fun on that. It yeah. is makes it more fun. So freaking fun. And that is maybe, maybe, you know, again, bet responsibly. Like for me, I get joy out of betting like a couple bucks on something random. Like Josh said, generally I try to bet positive things. I don't want to bet somebody striking out four times mm-hmm. unless it's the other team. But I, you know, I like to bet offensive things. Um, so uh, DraftKings sponsor us. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> if you have a You're gambling right. problem, call one eight hundred. Yeah, Res- or gambler DGen hotline. Seriously though, all right. What's bet next? Responsibly, kids, don't lose all your money. Is <laughs> it we have food? Just lose some of it. Okay. Gyms. All right. <laughs> Are you riding or fading gyms now? Again. I, I, I'm a very topical person. I like being up, up on current events. My wife and okay. I recently joined a new gym last week. Ooh. So we've been going. 
Um, and you know, uh, I've been pleasantly surprised with the times we've gone and the amount of people that have been there. Um, my biggest thing about gyms is when they get overcrowded and you can never get on the machine or get the weights that you want to get. And then that throws your whole workout plan off. Um, and I'm also not a fan of gym bros. Mm. Um, you know, when there's guys that are very obviously not natural, uh, that can be a little, whoa, 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 yes, yes, it is true. It is true. People use steroids guys. Um, <laughs> I'm riding gyms as a whole. I'm fading like the, the like gold's gym type gyms though. Whoa. Like the, the, wow. the true gym bro gyms I'm fading. So you like a family gym. I'm like a plan. I'm like people a people go there. I'll, I'm going to be some dock. water aerobics. Yes. I will do- Grandma I'll gyms? dox myself. I'll yeah. dox myself. We joined the, the whack. The whack. Wow. It's so fancy. It's not your you... first time. You're just throwing it back. I know. Throwing it back to the whack. We actually went to the Wauwatosa whack on saturday and that was a big time throwback that's a real throwback yes it was um so i'm yeah i'm like a planet fitness kind of guy i guess okay i'm riding all gyms because i used to work at one and it was it was fun now like you said there's a culture surrounding gyms that i think has it's not subsided but it's less than it used to be yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, people are more accepting of other people at the gyms. If you go to the gym to judge other people at the gym, you have a problem. <laughs> True. Um, And I don't have a problem going to the gym and, like, thinking that people are judging me. But, like, that's, again, that's because I've worked at one before. I've worked at, actually, two before. And everyone comes in all different shapes and sizes. And it's just a part of life but if you're going to the gym no matter who you are you're trying to stay in shape so good for you i'm riding gyms except for the people that judge you at the gym you said yes yes are there people that really do that i feel like we're always our toughest critics yeah you gotta do you know who joey swole is yes joey swole on instagram yeah i have i have no effing clue who that is oh yeah he's a good guy he's a good guy no he calls out like people that try to be wannabe influencers at the gym yeah it's it's really really funny funny. okay so i think what you guys are are roping gyms into are are really just wannabe influencers like gyms (laughs) as a place are great it's just yes there's this weird demographic of people that think that they can get clout by going to them or doing things in them mm-hmm. and that's mm-hmm. the problem those are yeah. the problem not the gym those dumbbells did not try to make an instagram or tiktok today <laughs> they're true. just there to be lifted i don't know that's my <laughs> psa that's awesome <laughs> those dumbbells. shout out joey swole i have no idea who that is that's probably a good thing you have to you have to watch no he's yeah you would like it yeah he's a good guy mm. He's on our side. <laughs> Why is his name right. Swole? Because he's pretty swole. Okay. He's pretty swole. Uh, last but not least, are you <laughs> what is riding this picture? Or breakfast. That's a good what? breakfast That's picture. A good I would. Breakfast. I would eat that breakfast. Now, I will admit, I during the week I do not eat breakfast. Uh, that is not advice. I highly recommend to eat breakfast. I just, it's not in my schedule right now. And I go in waves of eating it and not eating it. Um, I would recommend you eat breakfast. It's, it's, it is the most important meal of the day, as, as people like to say. Um, I guess I more so I'm talking about breakfast foods. Now, I, I know, Jacob, you love breakfast, but I feel like you don't eat it as much, just like me. I am 100% riding breakfast food, though. Um, I think breakfast is great for any meal of the day. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner, you can eat breakfast food. Um, I just, I, I'm fading eating breakfast right away in the morning. I'm fading I'm the, fading the idea. Breakfast. I'm fading the idea that there are certain foods for breakfast. Cereal, that's a breakfast food. But if you're going to call me out for having some like eggs and toast for breakfast with some sauce or for dinner, with some sausage nah that's that's good that's like a balanced meal too (laughs) 
Um, if you're gonna call me out for having some pancakes for dinner, well, too bad. I had a better dinner than you did, probably. That's so, true. but you know, I will say, I I don't know the last time that I ate breakfast before like eleven a.m. or ate food, I should say, before eleven. And usually, I won't eat any food until like twelve or beyond. And by then, it's quote unquote lunchtime so that's wild i'm not i'm not fading eating it in the morning because if i ever had a schedule that i needed to i would but i also like going here we go we're gonna throw it back to the last topic i like going to the gym in the morning and i don't like eating before i go to the gym so that kind of cancels that out too sure. and then usually i don't like eating now this this is something that you shouldn't do you should eat after the gym because it helps build your protein or um your muscle fibers back with the protein that you eat and it's better to eat sooner than later but i come home from the gym and i'm not that hungry usually so anyways there's a breakfast rant for you andrew are you a breakfast guy i don't know nowadays you know, oh yeah absolutely um although okay, i have to say yeah, somebody yeah. was giving me crap for eating breakfast food he was like, sir, can you move the squat rack and stop eating your burrito? And I was like, dude, like, <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. But no, did, I, I. So did you bring a squat rack to the breakfast restaurant or did you bring breakfast to the gym? <laughs> I don't know. You'll have to you'll have to try to figure that out. But no, I love breakfast food. You'll know, actually, historically, going back to the picky eating, I did not like eggs. Therefore, I did not like most breakfast food since they all kind See, of devolved from eggs you kind of had like now. a traumatic egg experience growing up in that you had to wake up to them every single morning <laughs> yeah so you might have developed like a, a traumatic experience from eggs having your probably. dad burn them every single morning i'm kidding probably <laughs> but i love breakfast food now especially when i cook it for myself i try to eat breakfast every day but I don't, it's usually my smallest meal of the day. Um, I usually have yeah. like a piece of toast with peanut butter on it. Mm -hmm. And then like, that's, that's like my, or like a handful of like a frosted flakes type, not frosted flakes, mini wheats type cereal. Mm -hmm. um, those are very, very good. good yeah, I, I went through a phase where I, I was having toast with cottage cheese every morning, which was wow, delicious. strange. If you've you never like had it, 80? highly recommend. Whoa, yeah, like five hate on cottage cheese. That's yeah, crazy. actually, yes. I'm gonna hate on cottage Wait, cheese. See, yeah, okay. I'm fading going, cottage cheese. Going yeah, back fade. to okay, going back to the picky thing here. I love cottage cheese. That's Great not something to be proud of. Too. It's like the worst cheese. Whoa, whoa! It's not cheese, is it? Takes. What is it? Like I don't even know what it is. It's like the byproduct of cheese. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> It's like cheese poop. Pretty much. <laughs> okay. That's kind of gross. You like that? But I don't I don't know. I just I I wake up, I shower, I get ready for work, and then I leave. I have my coffee. That's my breakfast, I guess. Mm, coffee's the breakfast. Coffee for breakfast. There you go. The real question is how do you like your eggs? Multiple ways. Burnt. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> On that note. <laughs> That's... Uh, burnt. Of all the ways. Over medium is probably the correct answer. But scrambled right. is a good way to go. The next time you go to a restaurant. All right, next person that doesn't forget or forgets to set their lineups. Actually for baseball. It's a okay. baseball only punishment. You have to go to a breakfast spot in order when they ask you how you want your eggs, you have to tell them burnt. <laughs> you're gonna eat your front eggs medium well please <laughs> well done wow. burnt well done. burnt or raw burnt or mm. raw oh god Can I have burnt raw. eggs with well done steak <laughs> raw eggs Yikes. i don't think they could legally do that anyways anyways well we have baseball this week we can't wait don't forget to set your lineups get those champ lineups in there bid up some cards Win some ether. Why not? Um, Maybe. We can't wait. We're so excited. Expect heavy baseball content in the near future because we are so back. Uh, it's going to be a great season. We'll have a lot of fun stuff planned. A lot of fun stuff coming up. 
Be on the lookout for a giveaway on our socials. And don't forget to check out the socials. Subscribe to our YouTube. Leave a rating wherever you are listening to our podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Until then, you just attended batting practice. Now you're ready to get in the game. Peace. Peace.